Okay. All right. Well, we're just going to find out what it is that you believe. So if you believe in Jesus, like, what is it that you believe about Jesus? Well, most of the times, we are raised into the faith. You're raised into the faith? Yes. Okay. But do you know that Jesus said that a man must be born again to see the kingdom of God? So you're born into this world, and you could be born into a Christian family, or you could be born into a Muslim family. Yes. But that doesn't... You know, it, it doesn't determine on whether or not you will go to heaven. And most people think that being good will get them to heaven. But what they don't realize is there's no one who is good. We've all sinned and we've all broken God's laws. Okay, so being good is not going to get us to heaven because if God is holy, which he is, and righteous and just, he's got to judge us for our sin because if he didn't, he wouldn't be a good God. If you say... A murderer can go free, or a paedophile can go free, and you don't ju you don't bring justice to these people, then you're not a good judge and you're not a good person because you're condoning that which is wicked. And so God, in his goodness, has to say lying is wrong, murder is wrong, stealing is wrong, hating is wrong, and we all, we've all done bad things. And so, do you know what it means to be born again? Actually, that's what I wanted to say. Earlier when I was with some brothers of mine, so we are, we are trying to ask ourselves, because you have spoken about being born again. And my question is, if you are already born, how can you be born again? Okay, so was you, so was the, you talking about that today? Just today, yes. Oh, wow, praise then the Lord. The, so he brought us to yeah. you for a reason, so, so we could answer your question. And the other person was, where is heaven? That was now his question. I don't believe there is heaven. I believe heaven is here. Because no. no one has gone to heaven and come back. Well, actually, that the Bible his, says, okay, well. That was his point of. Okay, well, um, praise the Lord, because he brought us to yeah. you for a reason. So sure. I, you, you, it's, it's ironic. It's yeah. not a coincidence that you was talking about being born again. And here and, I am asking about you about. You, and what where heaven is. Okay, well, the Bible says in John chapter 3 yes. that nobody has been into heaven except he that mm. came from heaven, the Son of Man, who is Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right? Now, you asked the same question that Nicodemus asked. Have you ever read the Gospel of John? Uh, the first John or second John? Or just John? The Gospel of John. So you have Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Yes. Okay, well, in the Gospel of John, Jesus, late at night, he has one of the Pharisees come to him. And the Pharisee says to him, Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. And so, Jesus, so the, man, so the man, like you, says... Well, how can you be born again? Yes. You can't enter into your mother's womb a second time. That All is right. my question. Okay, well, you have to be born of the spirit. So it's a spiritual birth. All right. And what that means is, is when you come to believe in Jesus Christ, so when you um, come to that realization that you're a sinner yeah. and that you cannot get to heaven by going to be baptized, joining church, or trying to be good, yeah. and you call on Jesus and you believe in your heart that he is God, that he died for your sin, Sins. was buried and raised on the third yeah. day, and he's very much alive, seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's going to come back on the clouds of heaven at the end of this age. Yeah. When you come to that realization and you accept that in here, and you call on Jesus, when God, what he does is he gets your heart, and he takes your heart of stone, supernaturally, spiritually, yeah. so he does it, it's a miracle, and he gives you a heart <laughs> of flesh. And we call this regeneration, We call this the new birth. We call this being born again. Because what happens is when you're born into this world, because of the sin of Adam and Eve, and yeah. I'm assuming you've heard of Adam and Eve. Sure. Okay. Well, because of their sin, they died spiritually when they, you know, God said to them, the day you eat of that tree is the day that you die. And we in Adam, we died too. So you're born into this world of the flesh. You're born spiritually, you're dead. Yeah. So when you come to believe in Jesus, he breathes new life into you. He makes you a living being again. So that's, you become a new creature. You are born again. You are transformed. You become a living soul, just like Adam was before he sinned. All your sin is forgiven. All your sin is now to the cross. Jesus takes his perfect righteousness and gives it to you as a free gift. And he gives you a brand new heart. And with that brand new heart comes new desires. You know, when he saved me, because I've experienced this new birth, sure. before Jesus saved me, I had religion. 
I'd go to church and I'd do all these works, but I, I wasn't good. I was still sinning. I was still, you know, uh, I, I, I was still very much dead in my sin. When I finally came to the end of myself and I called on Jesus and he gave me that new heart, along with it came new desires. So suddenly I had this. Okay, so basically when you, so we in Adam, we all die, all right? And so when you come to believe in Jesus Christ, he breathes life into you. And he makes you a living being, and he gives you a new heart and a, and a new. You know, he gives you the Holy Spirit. And when he saved me, I, you know, I, I had a desire for God. I had a desire to read my Bible. I had a desire to pray for my enemies, to love them, and you know. And I've been on a journey of sanctification, and it's the Lord Himself that's teaching me. Um, you know, but I was reborn, so I lived one way, and now I live a different way. What's the other term? Was regenerate. Regenerate it, that's what we call, oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, okay, so does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. Okay, so yeah. if I ask you now, what does it mean to be born again, what's your answer? Like you mentioned, you said uh, you don't really have to go back into your mother's womb. It comes with the realization that uh, uh, maybe my desires are not according to what God wants me to do. Ah, yeah, but the change doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from you. No. So, once you accept, I think that's what. Once you receive Jesus, this, then new desires yeah, come through the Spirit. Your, your through spirit, the work of the Spirit, yeah. Through the work of the Spirit. Okay, so how do you receive this new birth then? What do you have to do in order for you to be changed by God? Well, I always thought it's through baptism. No. No. Okay, so. so but I've heard you said it won't come through baptism. It will come with your desire to change certain things. Well, it's about coming to that realization yes, that yes. you're a sinner. Yes. And that God's holy and man is not. Yeah. And that when you stand before God on Judgment Day, you're going to be guilty. Yeah. And you can go and try to be baptized, but it's not going to take away your sin. sin. Yes. Only the blood of Christ cleanses us from our sins. And so it's about believing and trusting in what Jesus did. Jesus. So you got many preachers in the world and they say, join our church, be baptized. This is, this is man's way of trying to uh, obtain salvation yeah. because they don't understand that it's a spiritual work it's a and it's a work of God. Yeah. And so they're trying to replace that which is spiritual with that which is flesh. But we can't see the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the wind blows where it wishes and we cannot see where it comes and where it goes, but we can feel its effects. And it's like the same thing with the Holy Spirit. We can't see the work of the Holy Spirit, but we can feel the effects. And so it's supernatural. It's completely spiritual. The flesh profits nothing, but the Spirit gives life. So you need God to quicken you, make you alive, give you a new heart, put his spirit in you and bring you into relationship with Jesus Christ and it comes through faith so it's not like I if you think because I for many years I had an experience with Jesus when I was 18 yeah. but for many years I believed I had to be good you know and that when I meet God that God was good and that he wasn't gonna you know send me to hell and that when you see a murderer or something like that on the telly those are the kinds of people that would go to hell. But me, you know, I'm nobody and I'm just a normal person living a normal life and I'm not really doing any harm to anyone. Even though I was wretched, I was dead in my sin, I was horrible. I didn't recognize that until Jesus brought me to the end of myself and he made me realize I can't carry on living this way. And then I called on him and said, Lord, help me. And when he changed me, he gave me new desires, but he brought me under conviction and he showed me my sin and he showed me how unholy I was. And he, he showed me that, you know, he washed me in his blood. And I felt like, you know, for me, it was an experience where I honestly felt like I got into a bath of clean water and you're covered in filth and you, and you, and it, you turn the water filthy black because you're being washed. And that was the feeling that I got as if he washed me from the inside out and cleaned me of all my sin. And it wasn't through baptism because I got baptized when I was 18, but I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know his holiness. I didn't know how sinful I was. I didn't recognize it until he finally woke me up in 2017. So it's not about what you do, it's about realizing what Jesus has done for you and come into that acceptance yes. place of, Lord, I have sinned, I have broken your law, I am offensive to you. Uh, Lord, I can't save myself, I need you to do it. But you cry to him 
and it comes from here. Yeah. Yes. And the moment you do that, believing that he paid for all your sin, not just the sins of the whole world, but for every sin that you have ever committed. And and you call on Jesus and you say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Believing that he's God, that he died for your sin, was buried and raised on the third day. The minute you believe that in your heart and you tell Jesus this, he'll save you. Heaven is a real place. Jesus spoke about it. But just as much as heaven is real, so is hell. And there's going to be so many people that went to church and got baptized that will be in hell. Okay, because the only people that God is going to save are repentant sinners. People that come to the end of themselves, realize that they are a sinner, and then they call on Jesus and say, Lord, please have mercy. And then Jesus saves them. And then Jesus changes their heart. And Jesus gives them the Holy Spirit. And Jesus in them produces fruit and enables them to live godly. But salvation is dependent upon what Jesus did, not on us. And it's a free gift that you do not have to work for. You don't earn it. It's not you being good. It's not you going to church. It's not you striving with God. It's all about believing and trusting in what Christ did for you. I love the book of Psalms. I think what you're saying about where it says, wash me as in ice or top. I think there should be a verse like that. It cleans me, oh Lord, wash me as in ice or top. I think in Psalms. Yeah. Usually that's a... Clay, creating me yeah. a clean heart, oh Lord. Yes. It's um, Psalm 51. Sure. Cleanse me from my sin. Yes. Cle uh, wash me and create me a clean heart. Sure. If you read Psalm 51, yeah. um, that's the cry. David cried that. After sure. he sinned with Bathsheba, he, yeah. said he, yeah, was, he was crying about his sin. <laughs> exactly. And he said, creating me a clean heart. Yeah. If you desired sacrifice, I would bring it. Sure. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. The only sacrifice that God is going to accept is Jesus Christ. Sure. The only righteousness that God will accept on the day of our judgment is Jesus Christ. If we are not the righteousness of Christ that has been freely gifted to us and we come to God with our own righteousness saying, Lord, but I did this for you and I did that for you, then we're not going to get into heaven. We have to come to him and be like, I did nothing. Jesus did it all. And, you know, and he's our advocate. He's our lawyer. He is the one that intercedes for us with the Father because he paid for our sin and he gives us his righteousness. So when the Father looks at us, he sees us. He sees the righteousness of Christ, which has been freely given to us. And even though we may do works after he saves us, not one of them adds or increase our righteousness with God because through our sin, our sin is so wretched. But yeah. Jesus saves us. He takes our sin and he gives us his righteousness. So that's the righteousness that God will accept. When he takes away your sin, he imputes perfect righteousness to you and he gives you perfect standing with the Father. And then Christ in you will teach you all of his ways and enable you to live godly and do good works, but they don't add to your salvation and they don't make you holy because it's only him that makes you holy. When he clothes you with the new birth, that gives you his righteousness, gives you a new heart, puts the spirit inside of you. So this is a gospel track um, and it tells you that if you admit you're a sinner, believe Jesus is Lord and call upon his name, gives you the Bible verses here, but you do it from your heart, you follow the ABC on there, then you will have eternal life, the promise of eternal life. And it's nothing you do. This is it. That's all you do. And you do it from the heart. You have the promise and you will be born again. And I'm a witness of the new birth. Like I've experienced it. So I can promise you it's all true. A man is born again spiritually. Um... So, there you go. I'm turned. Where did you go? There you go. Follow the ABC on there. We're discussing what is the menu. Yeah. So you follow the ABC on these. On these, you do it from your heart. You know, there's lots of preachers out there, and you are be careful as well because there's lots of preachers that teach you um, give to God and God will give you blessing. Or, you know, it's God's will to heal everyone. Or you hear them saying, God gave me a dream, or God gave me a vision, or God told me this, God told me that. They're talking rubbish. God speaks to us through the scriptures. If you want to hear God speak to you, read your Bibles, because that's God speaking. And, you know, if you desire something from God and you want it, you can't pay for it. He's not, you know, but you can ask him. And if it be his will, he'll give it to you. These preachers that are getting rich off the backs of people's money, they have big houses and they drive around in these Lamborghini cars and everything else but that's not the way Jesus did he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey he lived as a poor carpenter he fed the 5,000 he didn't make the 5,000 give him their money you know you do, it's not it's not it's not true what they tell you so you have to be really really careful 
about the kind of preachers that you're listening to. A man is not saved by their works. We're not saved by water baptism. We're not saved by going to church. And we're not saved by our good deeds. We're saved only when we humble ourselves before the Holy uh, Almighty God and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And we cry out to Jesus and we say, Lord, I've sinned. I've broken every one of your laws. Have mercy on me. And we believe in our heart that he died for all of our sin, not just the sins of the whole world, but us personally. The moment you come to believe, wow, he paid for all my sin. And you call on him and say, Lord, save me or have mercy. And you believe that in your heart that he did that and that he died for you, was buried and raised on the third day. That's salvation. That's eternal life. It's got nothing to do with what you do. It's all about believing and trusting in what Jesus did. And that's the new birth. That's how we get born again. And that's how we get reconciled back to God. And it's about a relationship, not religion. And if anyone says you have to then obey the law, stay saved, they're lying. You're saved by faith in Jesus Christ. You're kept saved by faith in Jesus Christ. After he saves you, God sanctifies you and enables you to live godly. But that's the work of the Holy Spirit and it doesn't add to salvation and it doesn't keep us saved. Okay? All right, well, it's been a blessing. And I pray for you to read the Gospel of John. Read John chapter 3 and Psalm 51. All right, does anybody not have one? Okay, all right, God bless. It's been a pleasure. All right, God bless you. All right, see you soon. Psalm 51 and the Gospel of John, and follow the ABC on there. Okay, all right, God bless.